Hi Alice. Hello. Hello. How are you? Yeah, really good. Thank you. It's, it's Friday and the Premier League starts tonight. So yeah, <laughs> really excited. Yeah, I, I just thought about it earlier. I suddenly went, oh, Alice is also a North City football supporter. So <laughs> how are you feeling back to tonight? I go through feeling really scared and apprehensive and like I wish they just ended the season to feeling like, okay, no, we've got a solid chance. Well, I mean, because we're playing again, we've got a solid chance of, you know, getting out of this battle. But who knows? Yeah, it's, an, it's going to be an uphill struggle. Me and, me and my other half spent, I don't know, I think an hour debating of, oh, but if this result it goes this way and that goes that way, then then maybe this could happen. And then after an hour, I went, honey, it, it doesn't matter. Why don't we just watch the games? Yeah. <laughs> My other half is so excited. It's like Christmas. Like last night, um, actually on Tuesday night, he was like, oh, it's football eve, it's football eve. And then <laughs> last this morning, I just bumped into him on the stairs and he was just like, oh my God, five more hours. Um, so we, uh, we actually used our, so we're both season ticket holders. So we used our rebate money, although it hasn't actually come in yet. We've already spent it. So we bought a projector for the garden um, and a screen. So we, um, on Wednesday, we set up a little outdoor viewing area. So we've got our own Cara Road in our garden. So we've got friends coming over tonight to socially distance, sit in the garden. I'm gonna make pizza and we're gonna have beer and watch the football. Um, yeah. I I am so going to be stealing that idea. <laughs> I love that. We um. So I hope the weather holds for you today. Do you have some sort of roofing or something? Yeah, we. I mean, we've. Uh, we might have to kick them out, and they might have to go home and watch it on their own TV. If it, if it if we have a downpour, I don't know that we can we can stay outside for that. But we'll see. We used to, in our old house, we haven't done it in our new house yet, but we used to, for all the, the Euros and World Cups, we basically have Euros and World Cup parties, but our entire house would get turned into a football stadium. Wow. So um, in our old, so th this was a rental house, I have to say. So <laughs> we treated it with much respect. I don't <laughs> think I'd be doing it in my own house, but basically put posters up of crowds. And then because I'm, so I'm half Swiss, half Welsh wow. and Nick is obviously English so we'd end up with like the three flags up and Nick would always be like no no the Welsh goes right down the bottom in the <laughs> corner <laughs> so, right. um, and then I'd have like Swiss themed parties with all Swiss food and like little mini flags and with barbecues and uh, we also well, I've got so the business invested into a projector um, quite a while ago and I'm still yet to use it for anything else other than football. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> it was a worthwhile business purchase then? 100% worth the investment. <laughs> but yeah, no, oh, I love it. And it's such a, I didn't even think to do that because um, tonight, because we said with all our mates, like, what are we going to do? So yeah. we're going to on Zoom like, on the side oh. watching the football. But yeah, we could do like in small groups in the garden if the weather, ooh, Wi-Fi might be the only, oh, I see, I'm, ha, ha. <laughs> I'm um, already getting excited about this. <laughs> we, um, if, you need, if you need any tips, we brought a um, really cheap screen off Amazon for projecting uh, it onto. So, and we just, we just hooked it onto the, we've got a shed at the end of our garden. So we just hooked it on. We've got extension cables coming out the house. Um, and we recently got a Wi-Fi, uh, when we started working from home, we got a Wi-Fi extender. So we're fully set up now for football. But I think I might lose both, well, I think I might lose my other half in the next month. Um, <laughs> although I'm really into, into football as well. But I think on sa uh, Saturdays, I think they're doing 12 p.m., 2 p.m., 4 p.m., 6 p.m., 8 p.m. So that is now my Saturday. Yeah, we're, um, we're still debating because... <sighs> So we've got BT Sports, but we don't have Sky. Um, and I know, because we're, we're being a bit um, thrifty at the moment, because we're getting married next year, and we have all sorts of bills to cover, and we need a new roof as well at some point. <laughs> so everything that we spend has been, like, scrutinised. And I've been getting away with, with some things, like, because it's for the business, you know. I have to, I need to get, you know, certain things. But, um yeah, and I, we've both been like, and sh shall we just get the three-month Sky package or not? And we still haven't done it. Um, and we're trying, at the moment, some of our friends have, and we're all like, you got those free codes. 
from the club for, <laughs> for now TV. Can, can we have them, please? <laughs> <laughs> you can have mine too, because we both got them and we've got oh, guys. Yeah. So I'll send you an email afterwards. Yes, I won't yes. put them on this in case somebody somebody gets that. Read it out and somebody gets yes. that. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so um, yeah, um, football aside, um, I want to start off by saying congratulations. Thank you. You very recently got, well, I say recently, not so recently, got a promotion, <laughs> but it's recently been made public. Um, so I wanted to ask about your involvement at Fountain. Like, how, what's your journey been at Fountain? And maybe for anyone who doesn't know, what does Fountain actually do? Fountain Partnership, say. Yeah, so we are a digital marketing agency. Um, we have been going for, I think, 11 years now. Um, and I joined Fountain eight years ago fresh out of university um, and I joined as an SEO consultant and at that time we offered SEO and copywriting um, and we had recently won our first PPC contract so Google advertising and uh, so Laura one of the founders had to learn how to run PPC so she was busy learning that just as I joined so after being a fountain about three months I moved into the pay-per-click team and then uh, I've just sort of worked my way through every role in the business <laughs> till I ended up as managing director, um, which is really cool, really exciting. And um, it's funny, yesterday I uh, go to a leadership group called Vistage. Yeah, yeah, I heard, I heard lots of good thing about Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's brilliant. And I just moved from the key group into the chief exec groups along with um, taking this new role and I had to do a stick person yesterday which is you know explaining who I am and things like that and uh, one of the questions was what's the knowledge you use most in your job and I, I really struggled with it because I think the knowledge I use most is having been in every role I know how all the roles work um, and I know the business inside out and I don't know what else you'd call that other than I guess experience yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's so cool. I, I love the fact that you, you've been through that journey. And when I think back to when I was an employee, I don't think many of my bosses had done the job I had done before they sort of went up. Um, and it's one of the things that, um, so when I was at uni, I went to uni quite late. Um, which was probably a good thing because I actually ended up studying what, what I'm doing now. But I was like, oh, I get this amazing summer. And I ended up um, volunteering at festivals and I did all the jobs, including the toilet job. Oh, nice. Which I have so much respect for, but it does mean now when I, because um, I uh, work at a festival called Art Tangent and I'm now more in the leadership role, I have absolute 100 respect and appreciation for everyone who has to do the jobs that not everyone is, you know, kitted out to do, say it like that. Um, it makes such a difference, doesn't it? I mean, uh, yesterday we had um, an example of that. We were trying to get a proposal done for a prospect and loads of stuff had come up. So our, our designer ever um, and our brand manager, she just wasn't able to get to it. So I said, you know what, don't worry, I'll do it. So I just put some Taylor Swift on the, on the record player and just, between you know clear my afternoon between half three and six just got it done um and i think that that is they say leadership isn't isn't given it's taken but i think and i think one of the key elements of that of, of you know what being a leader is to me is rolling your sleeves up and getting your hands dirty and getting involved in everything you know um i think it's one of the key ways to build respect amongst the team and and also to build a good culture is getting involved and um yeah so that i was trying to see um have a think yesterday about what my leadership style is and i have no idea what it is but i think one of the elements that i that i am uh that's really close to my heart is just helping pitching in you know getting stuck in and um finding out what the team are really struggling with and seeing if i can help quite often i'll probably be a hindrance and they'll probably be like alice no we've got this stay away um but you know if, if i can help i'm always happy to so absolutely i think you say your leadership style i don't know if that's ever going to be a fixed point because you're constantly changing and and evolving and learning new stuff and and also I think management 10 years ago was a completely different 
function to what it is now. I think it's the job itself has changed, or at least I hope so, because I don't think micromanagement should be on anyone's. Uh, no, definitely. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's one of the reasons why Vistage is so has been so helpful to me. I mean, I, I'm sure everyone struggles with imposter syndrome. Um, you know, you hear, I hear it all the time from my friends and I definitely feel it a lot, but Vista has been really helpful because you're in a room with sort of 14, 16 other leaders who have the same, who are going through the same challenges, who have the same imposter syndrome. And I've only really worked at Fountain, which is one of the reasons why I think I feel it quite strongly. But then hearing from other people who come and say, no, we think you're doing a great job. You know, I, it really just makes you smile and makes you believe in yourself more so yeah. Yeah. that's great and that, that's exactly what it's there for and and also i think it's also worth saying like being a leader in a company which i don't know how many employees does fountain have now oh difficult question uh i'm gonna go with 32 yeah <laughs> That's a sizable amount of people that you're responsible for. Sorry, that sounded really scary. But you know, <laughs> but your your challenges that you'll face will be really different to someone who, let's say, is a, a solopreneur or works um, or leads a company with two, three employees. Um, it, it's a, it's a completely different beast. So to to be able to have your peer support who are in a similar situation as you must be so helpful. Yeah, it's, it's really great. And that's one of the um, awesome things about working for Fountain is that it, we have four founders as well, who, although I've taken the MD role, they're still very much within the business. So, I mean, uh, there's never a day where I don't just, you know, give somebody a ring and run something past them because they're still in the business. So why wouldn't I take that support and, you know, have that help? Um, so yeah, that's that's great. But Vistage is helpful, and I, I think the more we can do in Norfolk in creating safe places for people to come get come together and have conversations about things that they're struggling with, the better. Because um, you know, I've been to a, a few networking things, and primarily they focus on sales and stuff like that. And I know that's something that you you feel really passionate about. You know, not recreating that, and I think that that's really important. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> I have pondered about this quite a lot with regards to the good eggs because I don't see myself as someone, you know, I'm not a business advisor. I don't really know much about business. I make it up most of the time and <laughs> long. But what I do know about is events and event experiences. And for me, events basically is behavior change. So all I'm trying to do is give people meaningful um, experiences that will provoke behavior change in their whatever their leadership is um, and, and I'm starting to really sort of formulate that a bit more um, and, and it's always really tricky because people say what do you do or what is the good eggs and I hate the word networking like I really hate it but unfortunately there isn't a better word to describe it um, but then when I sort of tell them a bit more they go oh so it's like business development it's like no 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 there's other people that do that way better <laughs> it's like it's not that either so I'm, I'm currently trying to find the right language of how to describe what it is we do I'll, I'll get there one day but yeah. <laughs> for now it's a work in progress so uh, speaking about um progress and learning um we love or i love uh, finding out what it is that our fellow good eggs read and learn and what sort of content they absorb to either relax or progress. Do you have any recommendations for us? Um, you know what, I'm such a lockdown cliche. I've been doing so much baking. So I, um, I bought a, bread, uh, a sourdough starter from Bread Sauce um for two pounds fifty at the start of lockdown and i have been looking after it every day and uh, so i've been doing loads of reading about sourdough um so i've just made some the pizzas i'm making for our guests tonight are sourdough pizzas so i started them yesterday um and they've got about another three or four hours in the fridge before i can start to think about uh cooking with them so i find cooking really therapeutic so in my evenings that is what i'm mainly focus on so um, my partner Matt and I have been on a bit of a mission to make sure we try not to eat the same meal twice during lockdown mm -hmm. 
So I've been... Oh, wow, that's now quite a chat. That's becoming yeah. really challenging now. <laughs> I mean, we've definitely failed a few times and had a few jack of potatoes, beans and cheese when we have not been able to. And last night we had a Gonzo's delivery because um, <laughs> we both had a long day. And I was meant to cook roast chicken. I was like, no, you know what? Alice, I you were mentioning like all my favourite things. Yeah. <laughs> Bread sauce, gonzos, yep, okay, keep going. Yeah. Uh, so I've been reading a lot of Nigel Slater recipe books because he makes good, easy food. Um, yeah, getting getting to grips with my sourdough. And then I, um, I'd heard really good things about uh, the TV series Normal People. Yes. Uh, so I, I read Sally Rooney's Conversations with Friends a couple of years ago, but I'd never read Normal People. So I really wanted to start the TV show, but I thought, no, I need to start with a book first. So I ordered it on Shamelessly on Amazon and it came the next day and I got through it in about five hours. I was like under the covers in the duvet with my, with my phone torch on and my partner was like, just put it away, pick it up in the morning. I was like, no, I'm addicted, I can't. Um, so I finished that really quickly and then started the TV show and oh I do I'd read the book again tonight I'd watch the TV show again tomorrow it is if you have you seen it I have I've recorded it um and I've not had so basically I want to watch it but I need to get I need to kick Nick out of the house because he just <laughs> can't, I can't watch things like that with him because I can feel him judging um, <laughs> yeah. and uh yeah so I'm waiting for the yeah, but actually now you said it about the book, I might order the book and read that first because I had the same experience with Hunger Games. Yeah. And I just couldn't stop reading them. And I'm not, not someone who's, especially with fiction, I actually struggled to read, but I could not put that down. And <laughs> it was a bit of a, my other half wanted to get me to read more, so he got me Hunger Games so I could fall asleep at night. <laughs> it backfired because I was like, I'm not putting this down anymore. <laughs> Um, yeah, I really recommend it, and it's and it's only you know it's not a very big book either, so it's really easily digestible. So I've been focusing more on fiction um, than the sort of personal development leadership books. But I I did um, I tried to listen. So my uh, colleagues Rebecca and Laura they swear by Audible. So um, I've got an Audible membership, and I started to listen to Drive. Ah. Oh. That is on my list. Did, ah. they, did they mention Drive in their podcast last year? Um, I think so. It's a book. Yeah. It's one of Rebecca's like top recommendations. Um, yeah. So I started to listen to that, and I had heard somebody recommend listening to audiobooks on one point five speed because you can consume them so much faster. So I tried that and after about half an hour, I had not absorbed anything. I was like, I'm just gonna have to listen to it all over again. So I'm about halfway through that. But um, yeah, I struggle to make the time to find, like to want to focus on those kind of books. Um, so I, I've also I've got one on my desk um, that I've been reading, which is called Traction. Um, and that's more of a practical application. So there's a book that goes alongside it called Get a Grip, um, which is like a leadership story. And Traction is the, um, like the practical guide that goes alongside it. It's more like a workbook. Yeah. Um, and they have, I'll do a show and tell. So they have um, a thing in here, which is your, the vision traction organizer. And it's like a one pager that you should create for your business that has things on it, like your values, your 10 year target, your marketing strategy and sort of three points, your three year picture. And then it breaks it down into your one year plan, your rocks and your issues. So I quite like that practical approach to, you know, development. So, that is something I read that sort of 70 pages on Saturday morning before I made it out of bed. Um, and, and I really like, I really like thinking practically about things. So yeah, I, I really love that. I'll, um, I'll add that to, to my list. Oh, my list is just getting so big. <laughs> I'm so impatient because I, well, I've had to, I've had to pull on the brakes a bit this week because I've been overdoing it. I've been getting so excited about 
being able to consume things again that I went a bit overload and on Wednesday evening so I'm starting a unit course next week and I had the kickoff meeting and after the meeting um, I walked into the other room and Nick was like you're right and I literally was just like oh too much noise in my head I don't know I'm, I was just completely overwhelmed um so he bless him he's he's such a good future husband he sat down with me and was like right so show me what you are doing and when when he sort of he's like honey you're listening to two audibles um both of them are pretty brainy hefty stuff you're reading two books at the same time, 10 pages each. You're doing your business growth club, which by the way, is brilliant if you've got, a, if you're sort of in that growth mode, business growth club. And um, you're also doing, about to do your event design course. It's like, you're not even meant to be working full time. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> I was like, yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> I was scared it right back. So we, I've, um, I'm, I'm only reading my event design stuff. Um, and I, my Audible has had to um, move from educational to comedy. So when, so when I do the washing up and stuff like that, it keeps me away from the TV, basically. That's a, that's a good idea. I think especially at the minute, it's so, we're all, we're all just stuck at home. It is so easy to think, okay, I need to do this, I need to do this, I need to do this. And suddenly it's like 10 p.m. And you have not, like, I definitely find um, my other half always moans at me that I never just sit down and do nothing. He's like, you know, especially at the weekend, he's like, right, sit down. And we've just been renovating our house um, pretty much all our, ourselves so far. So there's always something to do. Like I, the other day after work, I was putting polyfiller in our porch, on our porch hallway walls. And he was like, you haven't stopped since you got up and st sat down at your desk at 8 a.m. Stop, sit down, like just take a minute, especially, um, you know, take a minute, not on your phone, because I really struggle. I am 100% addicted to my phone. Um, yeah, yeah, really, you on that. Yeah, I really struggle to disconnect. Um, and I think, you know, there's telly, my office, my desk is in our dining room. And you, there's always an excuse to do something. Um, and I think that the last three months have been I should think for everyone some of the most stressful times of our life and I'm definitely seeing signs of stress now in my you know how I feel and how I think that makes me that makes me realize actually we do just need to slow down mm. really slow down yeah I um I definitely agree with you and I'm I mean I get told off all the time because next time like, that's Thing is attached to you you're like <laughs> on it all the time and, and at worst even in the evening because I know um it's one of the things that we need to tackle is actually get an evening routine so I can switch off because my brain just keeps going and going and going and it's really exhausting but um I, in 2018 Nick and I went traveling across Europe so we went into Reading we did the student thing in our late 20s <laughs> <laughs> um and um I really said to him, like, I really want to experience this. Now, obviously, I have an iPhone. I take pictures with it. And we need to navigate and stuff like that. But I don't really want to be consumed by it all the time. Mm. So I went into the settings. And, you know, you can have your apps on it, but basically have it switched off so they don't constantly run. And so they only yeah. run when you click on it and actually... Um, and I did that. And it was really good for me because no one could get hold of me. I basically was just, no... <laughs> That's great. All my emails were switched off. My messengers were switched off. And it was only if we needed to get in touch with someone because we were lost somewhere <laughs> that I could actually use it. And um, yeah, it, it was really liberating and reminds me maybe I need to do another, like have a week of just, just switching it off. Yeah, I think um, I've got an iPhone and it sends you your like weekly activity. And the week before last, it was I saw it and I was like, no way, that is so scary. So I've put um, time limits on my apps. So I can only go on any social media app for a certain amount of time a day. And then it warns me. So I've, I've started that this week and have, I've definitely made more of a conscious effort to put my phone down. But it's a work in progress. Yeah. I really like someone, I, I can't remember where I heard this. It was probably on some podcast or something is because we are sort of the guinea pig generation. So, you know, when did I have my first smartphone? Must have been in my early 20s. 
um, but they sort of said future generations won't be quite as attached to it because it's all still new. We were sort oh, really? Of, yeah, they, they sort of predicted that we're basically the guinea pigs and, and with social media as well, like the current generations are so absorbed by it, but future generations will just be like, yeah, it's just a yeah. thing, you know, <laughs> like, like, I don't know, like books or whatever or TV is to us, but they won't have to be quite as absorbed by it as, as we are. That's um, interesting because I would have assumed that they would be more addicted because there's probably going to be more social media channels and they'll probably have a phone from earlier and because they'll be cheaper. But that's, that's a really interesting. I hope so for future generations. I hope that they're not as absorbed by it as I am. Well, don't you, I, I, I thought this the other day. So, you know, when you see a photo and you can pretty much tell what, what century, uh, not what century, but what, what age it's from. So if it's the 70s, 80s, 90s, or by the clothes, or, you can, or even um, I had some memories come up from when we went to Malta about four years ago, and I had this particular filter over all my photos. And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, that's too radical. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a feeling that like all those things like selfies, Instagram, are the way we portray ourselves, um, we'll be able in 10 years to go look back to, oh yeah, that was 2020. Oh, and that was 2021. <laughs> well, 2020 will just be lots of photos of our home or our baking or banana bread. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Um, I was going to ask you a question actually, because um, this is completely practical and absolutely off script. Um, I, I mentioned the Business Growth Club. So it's, um, I say it's really, uh, I would recommend it for someone who's putting in the foundations of their business. Um, it's with Neil Foley, who I know okay. work with Founder Partnership. Um, and, I'm, and you work yourself through model, modules and you then sort of take practical change and stuff like that. And um, I found like I'm going through it and I'm writing things down like values and stuff. But then I was like, oh God, but it's just going to be in this Word document. Like... And how do I not forget about it? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm really conscious that I'm like, I'm writing things down, I'm making decisions. But how do I make that stick? Mm. Have, have you found the solution for that? Or um, how, how do you do it for yourselves? Because I know like Fountain has that really clear, I mean, I, I feel like I very clearly know what Fountain's values are, even though I've never worked with you guys in that sort of sense. Oh, that's good. That's good to hear. I mean, um, one of the things that somebody, so uh, Mark Fisher, who's our Vistage coach, he's recommended to me previously is printing off our values and sticking them to the wall in front of you, which is super simple, but it's, it's the, the only way that you can live and breathe them is if you know them off by heart and you remember them all the time. And I think if you have them up in, I mean, I'm sitting in front of a wall right now, which isn't very inspiring. So if I put my, if I put fountains values and the behaviors that we want people to exhibit up right in front of me, I can make sure that as I'm sending an email to the team, as I'm creating a new process um, or thinking about delivering a presentation at fountain, then I can see our values, make sure it aligns. And I think then, everything you do will be to live and breathe them because they're, they're, they're so present in your, in your surroundings and, and, then, the, and then it becomes a habit. Um, one of the things that we do at Fountain a lot is company presentations. So every Monday we have a kickoff meeting. So we've been doing this for probably three years or so um, where we, so we've got two offices uh, so we grew quite quickly, um, or very quickly, and outgrew our premises. So we've now got an office around the corner. So it was a really good way on a Monday morning at half nine to get everybody into one room. So we would go over and do a presentation about, not a presentation, but just um, sort of a 10 minute update with the team about what was going on this week and good news stories. And that's been one of the, a clear way to just make sure that we're on track with our vision um, and our strategy and just to keep updating the team because you're, it's calling you up on things. Um, you know, if you said you were gonna do something last week and announced it to the whole company, you've done well, gotta do it. Otherwise it's a quick way to disappoint and disillusion 31 people who you've told. Um, so we do that a lot, but 
I'm a big fan of the writing it down, sticking it somewhere sort of approach. So we've, we've got our values up on the wall at Fountain as well on our stairwell. So every time everyone goes up there, they can see them. Um, and I think also uh, just calling, making sure, you know, if somebody comes to you with a problem and wants you to solve it, um, making sure that they've thought about it through the lens of our values. So one of, one of our values is transparency. So um, making sure that everything we're doing, we are approaching it in a transparent matter and calling it out when you don't see it, um, I think really, really helps. But sorry, I've rambled on a bit there. Yeah, but... no, I, no, I love that because it's, it's really practical and actually such an easy thing to do. You know, it doesn't, it's not like one of the hacks which requires you to spend a lot of money, just print it on your printer, put it in front of you. And it applies to companies with employees, but it also just me, because I'm alone. But I um but yeah I'm definitely gonna do that because I I wrote them and then I was like right I want to use them for every decision that I make because it's important. But then you get bogged down in everyday logistics, especially with events because a lot of it is is sort of governed by logistics. Um, and you make a decision. So I um, realised uh, we've had a non-refund policy for ages. Um, it's not in line with our values whatsoever. Mm. And I thought, what, why is it, how, how did that even come about? And, and then I thought about it and it was purely functional because it was the easiest solution. Because as soon as you go into different, it just becomes a nightmare. But then I thought, well, no, actually, I need to deal with that in a way that is in line so that's all going to change and the other thing is making sure that every key decision that you make you score it against your values like one to five um and then give it a score and if you're scoring high then go ahead with the decision if you're scoring low then you need to come back to the drawing board and think okay well how can if my if one of my if it's not meeting the criteria of one of my values how can i change it yeah. So that's something that we've been doing um, more and more is scoring things like we have um, strategy sessions for all of our clients, internal meetings, either once a month or once a quarter, where the whole team comes together and we align on the company, the client's targets and goals. And then the guys all work together rather than in silos to come up with and create uh, an ambitious strategy for the next quarter. Mm -hmm. And we now score those meetings against our values. So one person takes responsibility of doing that for the meeting. And then the next time they will meet, it will be somebody else's. And they run through the scores at the end. And then they all workshop how they can make, get higher scores the next time they meet. Wow. So, yeah, we haven't been doing it very long. Um, and it's definitely taken a little while to embed and see that it isn't a you know, it isn't a score for my benefit, it's a score for you guys in order to make sure that you're aligning to the company values and that you're, everyone's collectively upping, upskilling themselves um, and going above and beyond for clients. And we could definitely use that, that in more internal meetings that we have, but it's a nice first step. Yeah, no, I and mean, it's, it's amazing. I, I mean, I love it because it sounds like you are, what, what it de demonstrates to me is like, you're not just doing your job. You are constantly trying to up and up and up. And that, that's just, I mean, it's ambitious and amazing and crazy at the same time. <laughs> and it, I mean, one of the things that we say at Fountain is, and one of the fit, um, questions that uh, I've been asked before is like, what do you love about being a Fountain? And the key thing for me is that it feels like a family. And I think that the main, even though we've grown, I mean, when I, when I joined eight years ago, there was the four directors and two other employees and myself. So we were very small. Um, and I think one of the reasons why it still feels like family, even though we're so much larger, is that we do embody these values. Um, because everyone knows when they join a comp you know, who we are, I, I think. Um, and we can we live and breathe them and we know what to expect from each other uh, and we've just opened up a canadian branch so we've got two members of staff in canada at the minute and we're hoping to grow that over the coming years and that brings up that opens a whole new set of challenges in remote working obviously 
we're working remotely at the minute, but we've also got to contend with time difference, you know, never seeing them face to face, maybe once a year. Um, and then not coming to the office and meeting everyone. So it's really important that we, in, you know, we educate them on our values because I might speak to them once a week on a Zoom meeting for 15 minutes to check in and see how they are. But, you know, it's, it's not the same as being around them. Yeah. So that's the key to sort of that we're finding in like ensuring that that's a success over there and that it still is fountain is just making sure the values are really prominent. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's really interesting because this course that I'm doing, it's global. So the the course is meant to be in America and thanks to the, thanks to what's going on, I was like, yeah, can I come? <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> so I'm able to join in virtually, um, and which is amazing and great. But it also um, means that we've now got people uh, based in America, Canada, um, South America, Russia um, and all over Europe. Um, as well as um, I think there's one lady from Asia or something. It is just amazing. But then um, the organisers of the course have this challenge to overcome where normally the course would be three days long, you'd socialise together, you, it'd be really intense, a really intense experience, um, but you form bonds with each other. Mm -hmm. How do you do that now that it's virtual, people in their home, they're in a different setting? Um, and it's they've done so far, obviously I haven't done the full experience yet, but I can see what they've got lined up and I'm really excited. Um, they've sent us some packages through the post, they've given us a shopping list um, and we'll, I think it will be more than just the coursework that we'll be doing online. There, there'll be an element of, of being able to have conversations and bonds and they're using um, a piece of software which is called YoTribe, it's from Germany. Um, I'm, I'm going to test it next week, but apparently it's a, a less structured Zoom. Yeah. So, you know, when we're all in a room, you'd normally go off and have a chat with someone just on the side. It allows yeah. you to do that in a virtual space. Oh, great. Because yeah. I've, I've enjoyed the breakout rooms in Zoom. I don't know if you've used that yet then, but they're, they're quite useful as well. And it means that you, yeah, you can have like a one-to-one -one conversation rather than just, you know, 30 people in one call. And then people don't speak up and, you know, it's intimidating. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that sounds so, good. Um, yeah, yeah, so we'll, we'll I, think, I think the difference is with the breakouts, they're still quite structured because it needs someone to tick them all. Oh, yeah. They're, from what I understand, and I'll feed back on you. Tell yeah. <laughs> no, from what I understand, the other thing, you basically just float about and then you just go hello <laughs> so, well, Although, i um did you download house party when we first went into lockdown i had it before yeah i, I i'd already had it before oh, um, really? yeah but then i actually haven't used it during lockdown at all i was um i was late to the game and that app terrifies me i've realized i didn't realize that you had to lock the rooms so I joined, a, like, a, I could see a group of my um, uni friends chatting, a group of girls chatting. So I joined and I was like, hey. And um, so then we had a chat. And then suddenly, randomly, somebody that I used to go to school with just came and gate crashed our party and then brought a couple of his friends. And I was like, no, how do I leave? <laughs> it was quite funny for a few minutes and then it just got a bit awkward. Yeah. So um, I've been put off house party unless you quickly go into a room and click private. <laughs> absolutely um I, I didn't realize you could do that on house party so it must have obviously moved on from when i oh, right. yeah. i used it with my my parents and my brother um but um i have a funny sort of story about zoom um i have well, from my friend she was on a at like a conference but with work so it, and it's something to do with teachers and it was very you know very dry <laughs> very formal um and they had publicized the link via Twitter and they just had someone join um, with his man bits <laughs> and they couldn't get rid of him and the host wasn't very technically minded and she said she just saw this this lady who's like in her 70s going <gasps> and Oh my god. Why would they publish that on Twitter? That's like the old school days when you used to have a party and tell everyone on Facebook and then accidentally loads of people would write. 
Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, it was, she, I sort of said, well, who was running it? And she sort of said, well, it was people who've never really used technology before. And it's colleagues that I have to explain, like, how to use your phone and apps and stuff. So to even just get everyone on there was like a success. But yeah, I, I, just, I just thought it was hilarious. And I just thought, well, that was a learning curve. <laughs> just like, yeah. Um, no, yeah, she'll be, she won't be doing another Zoom call for a while. No, no, no. Right, we've come to the point in our um, call when I pull out a random question out of my jar. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, my jar is empty <laughs> and my printer has broke. So I've gone back to technology and um, I found a website that is called uh, Random Question Generator. So um, okay. let, let's click through and see if I can find something good. Um, and not inappropriate as that last one was. <laughs> um, oh, okay. So, uh, what have you recently found to be? Oh, I misread that. I thought. <laughs> okay. I thought it said, "What have you recently found to be iconic?" But it actually says, "Ironic." Oh. Um, and I find the word "ironic" in itself quite ironic <laughs> here we go I've got a better one there um have you been given any good advice lately recently you know what I'm rubbish with this sort of thing because my memory is I have the memory of a hundred year old my partner is always taking the mickey out of me and saying I need to start doing some sudoku or some sort of brain games so have I ever been at given good advice um so one of the things that sticks with me clearly i don't know if it's advice but uh sort of guidance that people and i know this to be true that people um don't listen when you speak they look at your body and i think it, there's a really good fact is it something like they only hear 13 percent of the words that you say or You're something less probably or... yeah um so something that i've started doing uh, at fountain is paraphrasing back to back what i've heard oh, okay so it's not really a, i guess it is advice guidance coaching um because i often one of the things i get frustrated about in um i'm a bit of an uh I was going to say I'm a bit of an attention seeker. That's not what I meant. Um, I mean, I am. Uh, I can't remember what I was going to say. Um, well, you need to be heard. You have something of importance to say that people need to take in. Is that maybe giving an instruction? I don't know. That's yeah. Well, sometimes you know, you say something, you feel like you said it very clearly, and then what comes back is not what you were expecting, which is fine. Um, so we've started using paraphrasing a lot of fountain. So really listening which is a skill that I'm still trying to develop so rather than take notes actually just listen 100% to what the person's telling me and then say exactly say in my words what I've heard back and yeah. they can then that's then an opportunity for them to uh, correct me or say actually the key point that I wanted you to hear was this um, so I've started paraphrasing what people are saying to me so I can um, make sure that I'm becoming a better listener uh, and also wanting people to do that back to me if I'm giving instruction or um, guidance in saying okay just for my benefit could you just could you just confirm what you've heard me say um, so I think that when working with people and working across teams of a lot of people that's sort of a really good piece of advice that somebody has given me yeah, no, that, that really resonates. I think that's a great, um, great tip, a great piece of advice. If I think back to the amount of times that I've had, have instructed, because um, I work with a lot of volunteers on the festival site, so, so it's a strange dynamic when someone works for you, but you know that you know, they're not being paid, um, so you have to create like an environment that is, gives them something back. Um, yeah. Uh, and yeah, and I'm very, uh, <laughs> what did I, what, what one of the crew sort of called me, um, I'm very Disney. <laughs> what means, does that mean? I think that's a compliment. It, yeah, it, I think it was a compliment, but basically, um, so the crew are the sort of the, the 
the people that build the festival and we're all friends and, and we're we know why we're there and we've got very clear instructions to what to get on with but um on the like on the day before we open um i have all my stewards show up and i will have like 60 or 80 stewards um all very different people very individual um different walks of life, different ages, different reasons for being there. Um, and I basically heard them through the entire festival site to, to show them what we are doing and how to open and close the gate and where people will be coming through and different wristbands. And it's, it's a nightmare because it's so much information. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I have no expectation for them to take more than 5% in. <laughs> uh, and then you have to redo it all the time but they they basically say i'm so disney because i'm like hi guys how are we doing <laughs> <laughs> and i've got myself on video doing that and i'm like oh god i'm so annoying no that's great <laughs> yeah. If, didn't it, like it. Yeah. <laughs> if it was completely dry they'd probably only absorb one percent of it so yeah, yeah, and, and also I oh, don't have a megaphone or anything and they all, and I'm like, come closer. <laughs> yeah, and, and I have to get, and because and, there's still building work going on, so there's hammering and stuff, and it's just, it always, it's, um, one of the water guys said to me, it's the most enjoyable thing to watch. It's so oh. entertaining of me trying to get everyone to engage and jumping up and down. <laughs> it's just like oh god yeah but thankfully um i've now moved on so i'm not gonna have to do that job anymore <laughs> but oxfam in to do it and they've been doing it for so long that i'm sure they'll be fantastic but yeah you're right with the, with the list and, and listening is an incredible difficult thing i mean i can talk for the world but to actually hear what other people are trying to tell me um and what um, the nuances as well of what's important to them yeah, and their body body language as well. It's something that I'm trying to learn a bit more about. My other half is so good at reading body language, and it's really annoying because he'll be like, "Well, you're crossing your arms. I know you're pissed off at me," and I'm like, "No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not pissed off." <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's an obvious one. Um, so if I couldn't read somebody crossing their arms, then that would be bad. But yeah, body language is so interesting as well. No, absolutely. Um, yeah. Right. Cool. Amazing. Thank you so much, Alice. I just realised the time. We've got way over. Never mind. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's amazing. That always shows me that we, we are obviously um, having a great time and a good chat. So, no, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having um, me. Yeah, and I hope to see you soon in the not too distant future, either cheering on Norwich or with a big cocktail in hand um, at our next event. That sounds great. Thank you so much. Take care.